sign books back there or um, Friedel Marx. And thank you for coming to my garden board talk. I'm really thrilled that you came out on this rainy night. And I'm so happy just to be invited here. Now, this seems loud, so I'm not sure. It's not loud. It's not loud. Perfect. Now, my audience is like uh, two different kinds of people, the safe people and the totally klutzy, dangerous people, and I am um, the klutzy, dangerous sort. So I was supposed to get here for a nice dinner at 5.30. I was still driving at 6.35. <laughs> it was two hours, it took me two hours and ten minutes to get here in the rain, and I was very nervous when my first speaking engagement way to make a good impression, you know, career-limiting move. So I went on and played for dinner. But um, that stuff happens to me all the time, because I'm just like the Darwin way to happen. And that's, that's why I like the Darwin words. <clears throat> so, and I'll just tell you another true story, because I can only ramble until the late covers get here. This is another true story. Um, you have to do toe exercises, and the guy said, pick up marbles with your toes. So I have marbles around the house, and my house has stairs. Recently, some guys were delivering the furniture, and I literally had to say, wait, let me get the marbles off the stairs. And I hear myself saying that, or I see myself standing again in one of my wheelchairs at the window on my second floor, reaching up, you know. And I just think that really, I, I try to be safe, but no matter how hard I try, the obvious eludes me. And such a distant dark portrait, it's always doing bow-handed things, always the last to know. So, um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, wow, this is a very large audience. How many have heard of the Darwin Awards? <laughs> oh, okay, thank you. How many have heard so I'll know what kind of explanation you get? Okay, so I'm going to let you know about the Darwin Awards. <laughs> now, what you have heard is that the um, Darwin Awards are named after Charles Darwin, the father of who?
dynamite to open the hole, and his dog brought it back. <laughs> Let's take. And, and, and so I investigated, I contacted the reporter 
will do it for yourself. Got to be true. You have to be over about 16, just so there's kind of like a maturity level of it. Well, be above that, somebody else is responsible for keeping you alive. Above that, you're responsible for yourself. So you're around 16, you know, about the point where you can actually laugh at it. It's pretty much okay for a grown up in the world. And, um, and uh, not having a slide, I can't count, but I think I'm missing one. Yes? Monsieur Larry, we met him on airplane. He was four, sitting around his backyard. And he had a very, very comfortable lawn chair. Let me show it to you. Okay, that's Monsieur Larry in his lawn chair. Well, it was so comfortable, he decided that it wouldn't be a bad idea to kind of float this lawn chair up above the backyards of his Los Angeles neighborhood to maybe check out the girls in their bikinis or, or not. And um, so he got 42 four foot wet balloons in cheers to his lawn chair. You can see it's a lot of volume. And he, uh, he had a sandwich, a couple sandwiches, a couple of Miller Lite beers, and a pellet gun. His plan. He had a plan. My favorite bar in the is called a plan. <laughs> I told you his plan, but who knows he planned? Because he shot up, um, he shot up a thousand feet, two thousand feet. He was shooting up. He was so fast, he didn't know how, he didn't know when it was going to He landed uh, 10,000 to 12,000 feet high in the LAX um, approach path. <laughs> this happened in 1985, and we had a 1983. Uh, so apparently the pilots were calling in saying, I think you're going to pull my license, but I'm still flying a lawn chair. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the, the Supreme Court say the helicopters tried to rescue him, and we were unable because the rotor turbine rush, but I haven't been able to substantiate that. But what I have found in newspaper clippings is that he eventually came down. Whether the limits are deciding to come to ground eventually. So he, 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 uh, he floated down and he came into contact with uh, Santa Monica power lines. Well, the police were on him at this point and they hauled him out of the chair and hauled him away and then he handcuffs. And there's this immortal quote, we don't know what he did, but he did something and we're going to find what it is and charge him. So. <laughs>
itching to tell. Yeah, in the green. The lady in the green. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
friend, Pat Glenn, who died of three cigarette butts in the heart. Thank <laughs> you. 
my fifth course right in the dark So, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, questions from the person in orange and green?
Oops. <laughs> you look like you want to say something, but, um, so let's see. Um, how am I doing for time? More stories? Okay. Uh, if you give me an idea, I'll play some stories around it. Slide. There's a woman who was doing a, um, she did her, um, she was majoring in information 
play or something of that sort. And so she took all the Darwin words of, as far as I think it was 2003, and she mapped the number of men versus women in the United States versus, in the United States and in various countries. And it's about a 10 to 1 ratio. <laughs> so, why? Yes, so you have to say something for a while. What if you get a vasectomy 
one. But I find them just real ideas. And some stories are just too funny. The guy who's playing on the cookie press, just too funny. And I said, I'm not going to be the one who looks at someone's hands and decides if he can reproduce. Um, so as long as he's sitting on a desert island, well, that doesn't quite work. So I would say as long as you're on a desert island with a person of the opposite sex and you're capable of reproduction, because that kind of made a human environment. That would feel a lot of things like sperm, stored sperm, stored eggs, that sort of thing. So you know, kind of a lot of research involved there. Okay, well, um, we went quickly away, so I'll take one or two more questions, and then I'll say thank you, and I'll be signing the book afterwards. So, one or two more questions. So, let's see. Strange category, what's your question? Bugs. Bugs. And any other final questions? Robbery. Robbery. I'm sensing the final question is, can you tell us some more good stories about bugs or robbery? <laughs> And what's the closest thing to Darwin where I've come? Okay. Um, well, in a sense, I'm totally Darwin here. Damn, my kids. I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the closest I've come to Darwin is Darwin. I really think I've come. The closest I came is that I was backpacking. I was backpacking when I was about 27 years old. And we, we waded across an ankle deep, 20 foot wide little stream. And in the middle of the night, a storm sprang up, and we heard it crashing and raging outside. We woke up in the morning, and it was white water. I don't know, maybe three feet deep, but totally white water. And trees had been pressed up against the banks on either side, and it was really hard to get back out. So that's the closest I've come to joining. But the closest I've come to being killed is that when I was a little kid, I wrote my name Wendy in rubbing alcohol across my bedroom floor, and I lit it. <laughs> And he drove away leaving his bumper 